So now that I, you've imported your data and edited the survey accordingly, um, you can now, what you wanted to do is to actually get that data annotated. And the way you do that is by creating a new um, annotation set for that survey. So all you need to do is click add annotation set and it'll bring up this form. You obviously, again, the first thing you can do is just give that a useful name to you. I'm just going to call it demo in this case. Um, but if you're perhaps using different classifiers and stuff like that, you know, you can choose a name that will help you help you keep track of that information. The next thing to cover here is that you are able to import um, annotations. And specifically, that's if you have an old data set um, for which um, you really you know, you already have that data set annotated down to the, the, the species level. Um, you've got the species in each image. You've already annotated it, and you now want that data in TrapTagger, either for just to keep everything in the same place, or to perhaps benchmark um, the platform. So that's what's that, what that is for. And then you'll upload a CSV, um, where you basically say, this image um, has the species in. This image has the species in it. This image has species in it. Um, so that's a bit of a niche use case and you're very, very rarely going to use that um, and we'll have a video on that later on. Um, but for now, 99.9% of the time, you're going to want to create a new, clean, fresh annotation set for your survey. So we select new annotation set um, and then the first thing you, go, you do for that is to set up your labels. Um, so your species labels um, in TrapTagger are completely customizable. Um, so that allows you to use any sort of um, any labels you want. So whether that's scientific names, common names, whatever language you want, however you want to uh, group that, it lets you do anything you want and it gives you the power to do so um, no matter where or what region you work in. And so it can be a bit of work to set up your labels the first time, um, but once they set up, um, you can then just copy them from data set to data set and then that's obviously very quick and easy. So for example, uh, that's what the load, load labels option is here. I can say, okay, um, you can see the Delta A survey, um, Delta A survey um, uh, annotation set one, I can copy those labels across and then edit them if I need to, um, but you can reuse them, that's the point. Um, the other option is to use templates um, or to create one from scratch. Um, again, depending on what makes sense for you. Um, but I'm just going to quickly show you, talk through the process through a template just to, it'll make discussion a bit easier. So I'm going to choose the Southern African um, label template um, just now to quickly walk you through it. So um, the other thing that's worth pointing out with TrapTagger is that we work with a hierarchical label system. So the idea is that you can create um, a label hierarchy. So you basically have um, group categories. So you'll say like antelope, and within underneath antelope, that parent category, you've got um, the different species of antelope as a child category, but you can even do you know as, as many layers to that as you want. So you can have antelope, dacre, and then under that, blue dacre, red dacre, um, uh, common dacre, stuff like that. And so it gives you, a, gives you the power to, to pretty much create any sort of structure you want. And so we do that for a number of different reasons. Um, the, um, well, first and foremost, it just makes um, annotation a lot easier. So when you're busy annotating, there's, I can't remember the exact number of labels in this template offhand, but it's like 70 or 80. You don't want to remember all 70 to 80 labels and associated hotkeys at once. It's slow and it's inefficient. Um, so you only want to work with small uh, groups of labels at a time. Um, so that's the first point. Um, the second point is that, um, is actually typically there are only some species of interest um, and so basically for, for, for any organization so what you really want to do is actually be able to say um, in this case our, our species of interest are our, our large carnivores lion, leopard, cheetah, wild dog um, and to be honest anything else we don't really care about so it's actually way more efficient to just annotate it as those four plus um, other and then when you're annotating you can just say other 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 oh wait that's actually a line other 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 oh leopard other 
And that's, and that's actually the basic idea. And then other, you can always, then in five years time, um, when someone actually wants to process that data, you can add all the necessary uh, species labels underneath that, and they can then process it when it's their problem. Otherwise, you're just wasting time. So that's, that's one of the core reasons. But it does have some other advantages. So for example, um, we've got a category like mongoose. Um, so typically, if you have some students annotating your data for you, they aren't going to get the mongoose species right. Um, so what you actually want them to do is, while they're annotating, just label it as a mongoose, and then you can, at a later stage, look at just the mongoose images and relabel them as the um, correct species. Um, we also have stuff like uh, group categories like antelope, um, where it can take a bit longer to figure out what antelope it is. And you can very quickly see it's an antelope, but it can take a few seconds to actually, especially if it's like a, they're obscured, to try and figure out what antelope it is, especially for students and stuff like that. So again, just dump everything into an antelope category. Again, especially if they're not going to be of interest, you can always annotate them at a later stage. So that's sort of the core idea there. So you can see um, that's what we've done here with this label set is we've got lion, leopard, cheetah, wild dog, our large carnivores. Um, and then we've also, while we added, we just added some very, very easily identifiable common species um, like elephant, giraffe, and zebra that you can just, you know, while you add it, it takes zero time to actually, um, for your brain to figure out what species it is. So you might as well do it at the same time. So you see all the, those labels, their parent category is none, so that they're at the top of your label hierarchy. You'll also see they've got a hotkey. And so the idea there is um, when you're labeling in the manual annotation um, part of the uh, website, um, you want to be able to just press E for elephant, G for giraffe. You don't have to think about it. It's not one to, to be nice and easy. So that, that's what you do there. Um, it is worth noting, we do recommend that if you're, for instance, leopard and lion, to switch to like numbers or something, because otherwise people do make mistakes. So that's, that's what you see here. Um, in general, to walk through this very quickly, we've got groups like small and medium cats. Um, they're not all technically cats, um, but it makes a nice group for an inexperienced annotator. Um, you know, they just see a cat-like animal and label it as a small medium cat. Um, we've got hyena, jackal as a category, we've got mongoose, pig, antelope is a really big one, primate, bird is, a, is another large one, um, and in this case, sundry. Sundry, we've just got um, all the other stuff like um, your rodents and your hares and stuff like that. And that's just um, what we found to be easy uh, for annotation. So um, you can grab a template like this um, and edit it. You can see, you know, you can delete a row um, or you can add a row with this button here um, and, you know, change all that if you want to use it as a starting point or you can just start um, from, the, from, the, um, from scratch and say, okay, we want the lion label, Hot, the hot key L, parent category none, so it's the top of our hierarchy. Then I want group category, let's say antelope. Um, so you create the parent label first. That'll be A, um, none, because that's at the top of the hierarchy. Then I want impala, uh, which is an antelope. Um, so that then hot key I, and it's going to be a child label of antelope. And that, that's how you set up your hierarchy. And if you want to delete one, you can just do that. Um, and it'll automatically detect if you to have duplicate um, hotkeys. You only need unique hotkeys on a particular level of, of your hierarchy because obviously, you know, you only annotate a level at a time. Um, so yeah, that's basically what you need to see there. So I'm just gonna grab my Southern African template and use that moving forward. Um, and then you click next. So that's, we define our species labels and then we move on. Then it brings up the second form. And so this is where what we call our label translations. The idea is the species classifier, the AI, has a bunch of labels or of species it can identify. Um, and that's what's represented here on the left. And then you've obviously got a bunch of your own unique labels on the right. Um, so the easy cases where it's got a line label, you've got a line label, they're obviously the same, that gets automatically handled for you. But if you've got, um, it's got a label that you don't, that you know, you've got used a different spelling or perhaps the scientific name for or a Spanish name for it or something like that, it's not going to, um, you know, be able to detect, automatically detect that for you or something like hyena where there's 20 different spellings. Um, you can then um, set up those translations. 
Um, it also allows you to then, at this stage, see that it thinks it's detected a particular species. Um, and if you realize then that you forgot to add a label for that species, you can just go back, add that label, and then come back forward again. Or if it's detected a species that's not actually in your region, um, what you can do then is tell it to ignore that species. You're telling it, you might think you're seeing an impala, you don't get impala here, just ignore it. And so that's that's basically what you can do here. So you can see that's the default, is just, just ignore um, a particular species. So we're just going to go through and set this up quickly. So Vesbok, I'm not expecting Vesbok. Brown and Hina, I do actually have a label for. It's just a different spelling, which you can see there. Okay, Buffalo, I've got a label just for Buffalo. Cattle, I'm just using, there's a built-in, um, there's a default label called Vehicles, Humans, and Livestock. So Trap Tagger automatically adds a label for that grouping. So pretty much everything um, is either an animal or, you know, Vehicles, Humans, and Livestock. Um, because livestock and humans get confused a bit because they're always often detected together and what have you. Um, duk Duk, we're not expecting. Domestic Dog goes under Humans and Livestock. Um, Forest buffalo, we're not expecting. Genet, oh, we've got a large spotted genet label. Forest hog, no. Gorilla, no. Bronze gazelle, no. Hare, I've got scrub hare. Um, Hartebius, I've got uh, red hartebius. Um, hippopotamus, I do have a hippo label. Um, different spelling. Honey badger, I've got the name Wartle for that. Um, vehicles, humans, livestock is for human. Cob, no. Nyala, no. Um, Aribi no, Oryx, I've got Hemsbok, the label. Um, Reebok no, Roan, we've got a label for. Rodent, there is a cane rat label for. Spotahina, different spelling again. Stripahina no, Topi no, and Vehicle is Vehicles in the livestock. Um, something else you can also do here um, is to try and, if, for instance, um, like we've got the Nyale uh, label here, uh, I don't have a Nyala label because we don't get Nyala in this, in this data set. Um, what you can do is then perhaps try and say, well, if the AI thinks it's seeing Nyala, it's maybe a bushbuck or a kudu or something like that um, to try and sort of, you know, which are similar looking antelopes from, a, from the same sort of family. Um, but you can then try and sort of get it to, to do that, that, that for you and try and get more out of the AI. Um, but then that does come with, you know, added risk of mistake. So, um, you know, you can play around with options like that to see if you can get better performance. And the only way you're going to know is by playing with, with, with your particular data. So now that we set that up, we click next and brings up the final form. So um, basically on this form, you're able to select now which of your species you'd like the AI to automatically identify for you. Um, so basically, um, at the most basic level, I've spoken in, earlier in the tutorial about um, speed accuracy trade-off, where you can basically use the system in different ways. Um, so if you're wanting to be as accurate as possible, and you're wanting to use manual human annotation, and then just use the AI as a bit of an aid, and then to double check your results, you then won't select anything here. You'll tell it, don't ID this species for me, um, I'm going to do it. So that's what, what you'll do there. On the opposite end of that spectrum, you can tell it to identify everything. And you can say, okay, just ID everything for me that you can confidently do so. And um, yeah, just identify everything. But you can also do that sort of um, find a sweet spot in between where you can perhaps have it ID easily identifiable common species like elephant and giraffe that aren't going to be confused with other species. You can do something like that. Or you can say all species minus species that I'm not expecting to really see here or that aren't going to be very common. So maybe identify everything minus uh, caracal, um, for example, and say, okay, well, yeah, I'm not really expecting to see caracal or they're very rare. Don't ID those automatically. I want to do that myself. Um, so you can do stuff like that. Again, just the only way you can really know because um, it's the AI always performs differently on different people's data. Just play with it. Um, so that's that. We're just going to go for auto uh, classification of everything. Um, just the last thing here is this one option um, is that you've got two options. You can either have um, 
the animal identified as the species that the AI identifies it as. So if it sees an impala, label it as an impala. Um, or if you can have it label it as the parent category. So an impala is an antelope. So it, instead of labeling it as an impala, you can tell it to label it as an antelope. And so you're actually using, losing a bit of information there, but that can be useful if you are concerned about confusion between the antelope species uh, that it knows versus what you have, um, or if you're um, just trying to get rid of the antelope, um, you can sort of try and leverage the AI's labeling to that. It, if it's confused as to which species of antelope, just label everything, you know, that's good enough for you. Um, uh, just label as antelope and get it out of the way. Um, again, that does come with the caveat of that is a speed accuracy trade-off. Um, so, you know, anything you do like that is going to perhaps reduce the time it takes you to annotate the data, but there is a risk that it's going to make mistakes. Um, so in general, the recommended approach would be just to use the identified species, but the option is there if you really um, want to use it. Again, you can just play around. So that's that. We'll click Submit. And there we go. Our new annotation set has popped up. It's now going to process. This can take a while, again, depending on the size of your data set, how busy the, um, the uh, um, server is, and typically you can expect that to take you know, a while. Go away, do something else, and come back and process that when it's done.